All right. So we've got another session coming up next. Christina Shell coming over to us from Iterable, their senior solutions architect. This session is called Go Put a Spell on Them, How Email Personalization Grows Customer Engagement and Value. Guys, I can't wait for this session. It's going to be awesome. Um, this is a pre-recorded session, but Christina is going to uh, show up at the end for the Q&A just to answer some questions. So let's go ahead and get this queued up. And it sounds like there's a haunted lawnmower outside my house. Jeez. But hey, email camp goes on. All right, y'all. Let's get this started. Okay. All right. We've got Christina queued up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Hi, I'll see you in My just a moment for the Q&A. Show, and I'm a solutions architect at Iterable. And today we'll be covering how to use email personalization in order to grow customer engagement and value. Here's our agenda for today. We'll be introducing personalization as it relates to our new connected customer, reviewing some key stats and strategy, and then I'll show you some real world examples of great email personalization. Last year was a huge year for digital everything. And as these studies point out, consumers are not only inclined to, but are actively trying out new brands and services. They're more inclined to do business with brands who tailor experiences. And they feel more loyal to brands that show a deeper understanding of priorities and preferences. They know the stakes, we're competing for their favor, and they want us to demonstrate that we both care about them and understand them. I read this great article a few months ago that really captured the sentiment of what we're talking about today. Experience is more important than ever to the B2C relationship, and this quote really speaks to it. What matters most and what you should let inspire and guide you is that people are changing. They desire digital and human experiences, and their values and demands for trust are front and center in decision making. Customers want to genuinely feel connected to their brands, and they expect their favorite brands to reciprocate that feeling. Reflecting our customers' values, reinforcing trust, and bringing purpose to their interactions are all a part of these new customer experience standards. Personalization often means many things to many people, but at its simplest form, it's a strategy whereby companies leverage data and technology to deliver individualized messages at scale. Tailoring your marketing communications to the individual has become less of a nice to have and more of a must have in today's digital experience. Just look at some of these stats showcasing the value of personalization for consumers. According to Accenture, 91% of consumers are more likely to shop with brands who provide relevant offers or recommendations. Epsilon reports 80% of consumers have chosen, recommended, or paid more for a brand that provided a personalized service or experience. And the Harvard Business Review says, consumers are 40% more likely to view items that rec they are recommended based on information they've shared with the brand. Now, as much inherent value as personalization offers for marketers in their messaging strategy, it doesn't come without its challenges. In fact, in a recent Gartner report for top marketing predictions, Gartner predicted that by 2025, 80% of marketers who have invested in personalization will abandon their efforts, citing the lack of ROI or the perils of data management or both. Now that's a shocking prediction. So how can we break this down and make it easier? Well, first let's talk about how we as marketers can create the perfect pairing of customer and experience. Those moments that solidify long lasting connections. Highlighting the right characteristics, matching profiles and complementing experiences is the name of the game. So in our marketing context, what does make the perfect pairing? The answer sounds simple and you've likely heard it before. It's simple in concept, though usually difficult in execution. It's sending the right message to the right person at the right time, while also including the right personalization in your messaging. It's important to make incremental changes that will eventually scale into an effective individualized marketing strategy. This personalization effort transcends just any old message from some campaign sequence. Take this example of how a simple yet thoughtful email from Apple transformed the mundane chore of a new computer into a powerful moment of personalized brand ubiquity. It was a power pairing between a customer and a brand's marketing that resulted in a great experience. The gist is that Apple targeted a new owner of a brand new MacBook Air with a welcome onboarding message. 
suggesting that they explore their new Mac with a specialist. This is the right person and the right message. The message itself was delivered 20 minutes after FedEx confirmed the package delivery. This would be the right time for sure. I know when I get my new MacBook, I am so excited, but always kind of dreading the several hours it takes to set it up the way I want. And I know there are some features I'm missing out on too. So if I got this email after my MacBook was delivered, I'd be very relieved and my excitement would be renewed. This very well-timed personal touch makes getting a new MacBook all excitement and zero dread. All personalization efforts grow from data, whether it be basic attributes or events within a user profile, data from external sources through an API, or custom product recommendations from a recommendation engine. Marketers are often held back by the limits of their legacy technology, forcing them to manually combine data from email, direct mail, mobile messaging, and other sources in order to gain a holistic view of their customer. Modern marketing platforms, however, offer marketers a way to securely house customer data from various applications and unify that data across your marketing tech stack. On this slide, you see all the different types of data that feed into a modern marketing platform in real time. You have the unique ability to store user data where it can be activated as part of a highly personalized experience. These experiences are well informed by artificial intelligence and delivered seamlessly across different channels. With the right technology in place, the only limitation to your personalization strategy is your own creative strategy. So let's go over that. Keep in mind, personalization is a strategy. It's not a tactic. It does take time to develop. And according to Gartner, only 40% of marketers report having a clear personalization strategy and roadmap. Gartner recommends that marketers take a step back to refocus on segments and test tailored recommendations to see what drives results. Now let's think about that. We must implement and measure personalization through the customer journey and life cycle, but start small, working our way into more complex and integrated ways to personalize our messaging at scale. Oftentimes we'll try and hit a grand slam with personalization when we'd be better off just simply trying to get people on base. If you're unsure of where to start or perhaps where to enhance your strategy, then ask yourself, where does personalization add the most value for me right now? The first step in defining a sound personalization strategy is thinking small and making incremental improvements over time. The easiest tactics to implement with personalization often are reactive campaigns, utilizing profile attribute data like triggering birthday emails from a birth date segmenting by a customer's list preferences, using events like cart abandonment, or using an account creation and onboarding process to build that profile right away. When starting your strategy, find simple ways to segment out your database, moving away from a one-size-fits-all mentality. A study at Stanford Graduate School of Business found that by simply adding the name to the subject line of an email has the ability to increase the probability of an open by 20% boost sales leads by 31% and reduce unsubscription rates by 17%. So when it comes to collecting data, uh, more is not necessarily better. If you're not collecting the right kinds of information, you won't have a good starting point for your personalization. So start by collecting information from customers via signup forms. And when a subscriber adds themselves to your email list, you can ask them for some additional questions beyond the typical email address or name. You could ask them for location, birthday, occupation, or more. The next two steps are when you can really begin tailoring your messages to be more personalized, because this is when you stop being reactive and you start being proactive. You wanna take a look at the user's past behaviors in order to make predictions about what they might do next. And as you advance your personalization efforts, you can begin tailoring your messages from segment-based over to a more one-to-one -one messaging strategy. Examples of advanced strategies include personalizing based on website activity, geofence, or location, using behavioral events like downloading an app or completing a signup, enriching your email messages with metadata, and also using cross-channel messaging based on the user's experience. The most sophisticated form of personalization goes beyond messaging users in small segments and truly messages every user as a unique individual. 
When using broad surface level information for a segment, you often get the same surface level or broad capabilities. We wanna be able to respond appropriately in real time to the customer's interests, wants, needs, and identity. This is what we call individualization. And it takes into account various profile, behavioral, and lifecycle data points in order to create highly personalized messages for our customers and can even predict user behavior. Advanced, uh, examples of advanced individualization include using the customer's brand affinity to make rich and highly personalized product recommendations, including dynamic content in our messaging, and leveraging predictive analytics for real-time triggers. Let's drive these points home with some examples of great email personalization. I'm really into outdoor activities like biking, trail running, and hiking. So I downloaded and signed up for a bicycle and hiking social app. I really wanted to not only keep track of my progress, but also try and get better every week. And during registration, I supplied some basic demographic information like name, birthday, and location. I also opted in to receiving new challenges and monthly stats via email. And they really highlighted the benefits of opting, opting into email updates by using verbiage like track your progress and beat personal records. This really spoke to me because being able to consistently improve was the main reason I downloaded this app. They had a short but effective onboarding process and this made it easy to get going. During this onboarding process, I completed a short survey about which activities I participated in the most. And this not only personalized which challenges I would see within the app, but also let marketers know which content I would like to see via email. As a part of a welcome series, I immediately received an email prompting me to get started with my activities. This email also encouraged me to provide more information about my weight and heart rate in order to receive accurate activity analysis. I definitely wanted my activity tracking to be as accurate as possible, so I clicked that link right away. I started recording my activities and engaging with emails on a regular basis. I hadn't opted in to push notifications for this app, so my primary channel of communication was email. And I always check my email on Saturday and Sunday mornings and go for a hike in the afternoons. And what this company was able to do was identify when I was engaging with email, where I was hiking, and what days and times. And because my user profile contained all this valuable information, the company sent me emails every Saturday morning with personalized content recommendations and suggested challenges for my weekend hike. I don't know if you can see it in the slide, but that 3D image of terrain is the exact same mountain trail I hiked the weekend before. And the suggested challenges are derived from other challenges for which I've done in the past. This keeps me excited and engaged with the app because I not only wanna beat my own records, I also wanna challenge my friends and participate in the social aspect of the app. On Sunday morning, about a month after initially downloading the app, I received a highly individualized monthly recap of my activity. This recap included visual and numerical representation of my total activity, along with personal records and how I stack up to other challengers. By leveraging the user profile, this company was able to increase their user engagement to 80%. And this campaign led to users coming back to the app, sharing with others and increasing overall engagement. This story is a perfect example of sending the right message to the right person at the right time with the right personalized messaging. And because I'm so active, I wanna make sure I'm getting the right nutrients in my diet. To do this, I use a diet log app to keep track of the food I eat. In this email, I'm directed to view my weekly digest and log of food. They encourage me to stay engaged by saying, the more you log, the more helpful your weekly digest will be. For this particular app, I've also opted into receiving emails that notify me when I'm low in nutrients like calcium or when I've missed logging for a few days. And this company uses multivariant testing in order to consistently iterate on their personalized messaging. The email you see here was tested with and without emojis, and the content included details about the most recently logged meals and also added some personalized recipe recommendations. I received emails also when I've successfully logged for a consecutive time period, which prompts me to keep my streak going. This same app also has a different message type that includes a newsletter and it contains content that relates to my activity in the app. What's really interesting is that this email includes articles about intermittent fasting because I often didn't log breakfast. And they included an article about stretching because I logged several trail runs the week before. This message type is different from previous types that notify me of my weekly digest when I'm low on certain nutrients 
or when I've had a logging streak. Message types refine message channels. Providing users with fine grained control over which specific messages in a category they want to receive, whether it be a weekly newsletter, daily deals, etc. If I didn't want to receive this newsletter, for example, I could unsubscribe from the newsletter type, but also receive my logging reminders. In keeping with the health and fitness theme, there are some weeks that I don't really feel like meal prepping. And for those weeks, I use a meal delivery service. When I'm not using the service for a period of time, I deactivate those deliveries. But this company encourages me to reactivate them by sending me a discount. They also made their email interactive by using AMP interactive email. An AMP for email allows you to shorten your conversion funnel by embedding your high value conversion points directly into your marketing emails. The image is animated and cycles through previous meals I've ordered. And they also allow me to select meals for my next delivery within the email itself. And lastly, this company also sends me emails on Sunday mornings, which is optimized to the time I engage with the email the most. They send me time sensitive promotions for items I've ordered in the past. Send time optimization is an AI tool that helps you send email and push notifications right when your users are more likely to open and engage with them. For each of a campaign's recipients, it uses machine learning to analyze historical engagement behavior and select an optimal per person send time. Personalization can be a daunting task at first but the reward is substantial. Data is the foundation of personalization, so it's important to ensure that you have the right user and event data that is integrated into an easy to use platform that will help you achieve the best personalization strategy. Once you start, keep iterating by testing your personalized campaigns. And remember to start small. Work your way up to sending powerfully individualized messages to your customers. Thank you for your time today and feel free to contact me with any questions. Also, if you want some free iterable swag, send an email to events at iterable.com. All right, y'all. We just wrapped up the uh, presentation from Christina. We're gonna get here live. Christina, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, thank you for asking. Oh man, so I know you just got here to email camp. You didn't happen to see any crazy uh, uh, mad person or madman running around the parking lot, right? Because I definitely got chased on my way in here. So I hope you're all right. Yeah, I think I escaped the zombies. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good to hear. All right, well, we've got a lot of good questions for you. Um, everyone is just can't wait to get these questions, these questions answered. So let's get started from the top, shall we? All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to utilize the upvote function uh, because I bet we, we, yeah, we got a ton of questions so far right now. Um, so let's try and uh, use the upvote function so we can utilize our time and stay uh, stay trucking. All right. So let's see. First one that we got. Okay. All right. First one's coming in from Taylor. Uh, Taylor asked, our prospect data data isn't consistent, so we just end up using the first name personalization token, thinking this will check the box for personalization. Are there personalization efforts you'd recommend that don't rely heavily on individuals' data? Um, that's a good question. How I would approach this is, um, you know, maybe trying to make that data a little bit more reliable, like um, sending out maybe some surveys to customers, finding out what their interests are, what kind of communication they want to receive. Um, you know, and you can also gather uh, behavioral data from your website to mm. help add to those um, user profiles and find out, you know, what type of content they're viewing, what kind of behavior they're engaging in, and that'll help you tailor your messages. Nice, nice. Okay. All right. Up next. Uh, okay. Coming from our buddy, Ugi. Ugi said, uh, how can small businesses or the sole owner start gathering this data without huge investments in big systems for a small business? Yeah, uh, another good one. Um, so, I mean, you could use, if you're uh, using Google Analytics or something, um, you can kind of get the low hanging fruit from, you know, uh, visitors that way, if it's possible and build your email lists, if you have the email, um, 
Otherwise, you know, you can try and um, use some sort of free software like Google Analytics or something that could help you get basic information like name, age, you know, gender, um, and ge geographical location, and um, and then kind of work your way up from there. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, one, uh, one, two common names for uh, common email tools: Google in Analytics. That is one of the, one of the most uh, common free tools, I would say. That and Google Postmaster tools, y'all. Those are the common most. Probably two, you know, Google, you know, tools that we use probably the most in, in the industry is the most. But all right, moving on. Okay, so it looks like we got one from here from Alexa. How are you able to identify when users are not, excuse me, how are you able to identify when users are most engaged? So I kind of touched on it before. Um, you know, you can analyze users' website activity or app activity mm -hmm. to get, um, you know, what type of things they're engaging in, like if they're, you know, viewing certain products or um, purchasing certain things, that would be a good way to, to see how they're engaging or not engaging. Um, mm -hmm. And then also if you have an email tool that could track clicks within the emails, that would tell you that you're doing a good job and uh, people are interested in the content in your emails. Nice, okay. So then coming up next, looks like we've got from, okay. Uh, can this, right message, right time, et cetera, be accomplished without a CRM or contact database? Yeah, um, you could, you know, use your analytics, base analytics platform um, to get, you know, those basic profiles. Um, you don't, a CRM does help, you know, it enriches those uh, customer profiles and gives you a lot more demographic and behavioral data. Um, and also a CDP, but you don't need that to start with your messaging. You know, remember we want to start small and uh, build our way up. You know, we can still use just basic age or birthday if you have it. Send a birthday email off a birthday, and um, you know, test different subject lines and things with with and without emojis. You don't necessarily personalization doesn't have to include um, you know uh, customer data. There you go. Oh, I love me a good birthday email. Oh, I don't know about you, but I love me a good birthday reward email. Could be from oh, fast yeah. food, could be restaurants, could be drinks. Oh, don't care. Love me a good birthday email. This brings a smile to my yeah. heart. <laughs> yeah, Chipotle, um, yep. they send a birthday email with like a uh, guacamole. Yes, free guac. the free guac. It's like got a candle in it. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, that's like that's like an adult cupcake if you think about it. You just, just take a little <laughs> guac with a, a little, little uh, candle in it. Oh, hey, I'm there. Sounds good to me. I'm getting yep. hungry now. All right, let's keep moving on here, shall we? Um, oh. Okay, before I start, start talking about this subject, uh, y'all, um, this one is actually about the iOS update, um, the Apple privacy update. We're actually gonna have a, a, a panel about that on day three. So uh, don't forget to, to join in for that panel. It's gonna be great. We're gonna be talking about that, having some, uh, some uh, uh, ESPs and ISPs in there as well. Super excited. Um, but okay, so on to the Apple and iOS update. How can we best optimize messages with the new iOS update? Um, assuming we're talking about proxy opens here, um, you know, uh, we, you could switch your strategy from relying on opens to relying on uh, clicks or um, website activity. Um, that would give you a better idea if somebody is engaged with your email, if your email messaging is on target for that, you know, user profile. Um, and then also, you know, there might be, uh, I know new things are coming out all the time, but there might be a way to identify those Apple Mail users and, um, you know, kind of either filter them out or include them in a different segment and that kind of thing. Nice. Okay. And then here's another one related to the same, uh, just to the same, you know, Apple uh, privacy uh, update that's going on right now that everyone's, you know, everyone's kind of staying up to date on. Um, and she said from uh, Tamata, uh, how do you expect send time optimization to change with Apple's new email privacy protection? Yeah, good one. So uh, we would probably want to, I know I've said this a million times, I sound like a broken record, but you know, instead of looking at what time they're opening the emails and whatnot, um, they can, we could check the clicks, you know, check that time, or we could also, you know, click to, to website. We could see what they're doing after they click. 
Um, so like, you know, if I check my email in the evening, I'm less likely to click. And if I do click, then I'm less lucky, likely to do things because I'm like tired. But if it's in the morning, you know, if I'm really active, then that would be a good indicator of uh, when to send the email. Nice. And hey, you do not sound like a broken record because these are constant things <laughs> that we have to do as email marketers, right? We, it's like driving. You got to keep it on 10 and 2. If you take your hands from the wheel, then hey, then you're not paying attention, right? So it's all these things that we have to pay attention. That's why it's called engagement, y'all. All right. Uh, let me see here. We have time for just a few more. Um, let's see. Lots, lots, lots of questions in here. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. This is a good one. And and like I said, Christina, you do not sound like a broken record because these are these are these are uh, best practice tips, y'all. These are the most common things. So, um, what are some ways to implement personalization when you have a recipient base? who has reacted negatively to use their first name in the past, but use but use of a formal citation or last name seems to dry the engagement down. Yeah, a uh, good one. Um, you know, there is a such thing as too much email personalization. Um, and, you know, when you're kind of at, at that crossroads, maybe um, the surveys are a good idea. Send out surveys to see like what they want in their personalized messaging and if they even want certain categories and things like that um uh, build up take things slow like maybe you know don't start with the first name or salutation but just like mm -hmm. test on different subject lines to see what people prefer um, or use emojis or things like that um different graphics in emails and then once you can kind of build this persona around you know not just date their first name or birth date then you can send personalized messaging, um, more of a visual sense, um, if that makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that makes sense. Okay, all right, y'all, looks like we got time for one more. Uh, let's see, okay, this is a really good one. I love this one a lot. Uh, this one's from Jolanta, and uh, she asked, when it comes to sensitive data, uh, specifically medical, uh, what would the best personalization strategies be as you can't really share direct in your face behavioral data? Yeah, this is um, kind of similar to the last question. Um, I guess, uh, you know, leverage what you do know about them, um, like what kind of things they've responded to in the past, not necessarily just on the website or app, but just in the emails, like what kind of links they've clicked on. Um, if they have any sort of uh, preferences or um, subscription center, then you can know what types of emails they want to receive. Um, you know, keep them interested, um, provide, I don't know, I don't know if this applies to your specific business, but maybe um, if you're having a sale, send, send them um, sales for items that they've purchased in the past. Um, yeah. And then, you know, obviously, you know, take things slow and build up and see what, what people are responding to. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. All right. Cool. Well, y'all, Christina, thank you so much for taking time on your busy day to be here. Um, I know you, know, you get to come over from, from iterable, iterable camp and kind of join us over here at Pathway Email Camp, but I appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking time on your day to be here to do the session. And uh, please be careful on your way out. All right. There's, there's, yeah, you said there's zombies here. There's a madman oh, walking yeah. around with a machete and a knife. So, hey, can't be too, can't be too safe. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me and uh, have fun today, everyone. Be careful. Awesome. Good to see you, Christine. Take it easy. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.